Do you know a founder of a big broking firm says less than 1% of the traders in India makes about fixed deposit returns? What? If you do not have a clear understanding, you might miss out on a great valuation of a stock. Really? If you switch over to newer trends, you might miss out on bigger opportunities. Is it true? See, investing styles and tactics are like the clothes that fits you the best. You don't need to put on anything expensive. You need something that is comfortable to wear and that will last a long time. So today, we will discuss four important strategies that you can choose to invest in the stock market and we will also see which one of them fits you the best. And as a bonus, at the end, I will share a shocking data. A da a data that will help you choose the best strategy for yourself. So stay till the end, like and subscribe this channel right away so this video can reach a lot of people. Well, the MSRS has given us a tentative portfolio for all walks of people in our life. And this is exactly what they have to tell us. Here is a hypothetical allocation for five different investment types depending on your financial goals and your risk appetite, which tells us while you are younger, you can be more aggressive and invest in growth stocks. And while you grow old, you might want to shift to a more conservative portfolio, which may involve allocating a major chunk into bonds. So what you choose depends largely on your risk appetite and your age at this moment. But broadly, if we have to categorize the investing world, we can categorize them under four different strategies. Number one, growth investing. Growth investing using the fundamental analysis is the oldest and one of the most basic styles. This is an active investing strategy. It involves analyzing the company, the company's balance sheet, studying the company's balance sheets, fundamentals, the ratio analysis. And the goal is to find the company whose future performance looks good. The goal is to find the financial numbers of the company whose future potential looks good. Look to create a portfolio of 10 different stocks at least and these 10 different stocks should have passed the filtered criteria of being the top notch companies of, the, of your country. Then once you have filtered these 10 companies, go deep into the financial statement and try and understand what this company is all about and their future prospects. And only and only then you can probably go for the top three or four companies to invest in. Number two, active trading. See, most active traders, they, they depend in some form of numbers, chart patterns to place their trade. Their research focuses on the change in the stock prices. They trade the human behavior in the market, the price fluctuation rather than the business potential. They do not work or focus on the business potential of the company, but rather the small shuttle movement that the company shows in a very short span of time. In trading, you may work in time frames of months, maybe weeks, maybe a day or even seconds. But active trading is hard. It is really, really hard. Very few, very few gets even fixed deposit returns. Don't believe what I say. At least you can believe Nitin Kamath. Look at what he says. Nitin Kamath is the founder of Zeroda. He says, thanks to social media, countless people are lured into the market and have a rosy view of trading. But the reality is less than 1% of active traders earn more money than a bank fixed deposit over a three year period. That is a warning for all the traders, for all traders who, who run after the market and they believe that they can capitalize on the timing. 
they can capitalize on the market fluctuation they believe they can time the market properly less than 1% earn fixed deposit returns really all the delhi hassle this tension this apprehension the plucking your hair the anxiousness the countless sleepless nights all of this for just fixed deposit returns really seriously traders kya chhod yaar khane pe concentrate kar well the third important strategy would be value investing well this involves finding out stocks at a proper value stocks that are trading or they, they are currently priced at a price point which is less than their actual worth this is sometimes what happens is a stock or a company might underperform due to some news or something that has happened in the market something that has happened in your country for that reason the price of a particular company has gone down but that may not be a perfect reflection of the exact situation of the company but at that point of time the company is trading at a very less price now that is what we call it as a value stock we need to identify such values such valuable companies which are trading at a lesser price we all know of warren buffett he is probably the best well known value investor as in today but not just warren buffett there are many others whom we have heard of benjamin graham david dodd charlie munger christopher brownie billionaire hedge fund manager seth kalman so you, you would understand that the value investors they follow the fundamental analysis they do not follow the herd they are long term investors in quality companies the fourth strategy would be to buy and hold so the buy and hold investors they believe time in the market is more valuable than timing the market is more important than timing the market because the idea is the long term return overrides the short term volatility and since you're not selling it off you're holding it for a very long time you are actually negating the volatility of the market you're trading less and hence the trading costs are minimized and what happens with that is in, it increases the net results of your portfolio we further drilling down you might have four different strategies in buy and hold one is is to take a core satellite approach see a core satellite approach is a very common portfolio design where you have a core portfolio which consists of maybe a major large cap or or maybe a mutual fund which consists the major part of your portfolio and then smaller portfolio chunks are formed to complete the entire portfolio what is the main goal of this portfolio the main goal is to reduce the risk by diversification and while beating a standard benchmark well this type of portfolio allocation hopefully beats the benchmark over a longer period of time then there are other three which would be the modern portfolio theory the post modern portfolio theory and the tactical allocation now i have a dedicated video on all these three i'll give the link in the v card at the end and also the link will be there in the description you can go and have a look at it that's a wonderful video all of these three and now since you have seen the strategies now let's see this shocking fact over a period of 20 years miss just 10 days and you would have less than half as much miss the best 20 days and you would barely have made any money at all look at this table here from motley fool it says if you're fully invested into s&p 
your returns annual performance would be around 6.06%. These are the US return numbers, but I'm just giving you the data. But if you try and tweak and try to time the market and you miss out on the 10 best trading days, your annual performance would drop to 2.44%. So from 6.06, if you start timing the market and you miss 10 best days in 20 years, in 20 years, your annual performance would drop down to 2.44%, which is almost half. You would lose 50% of your returns. If you miss 20 best days, your annual returns would be almost nil. If you miss anything more than that, your returns are in negative numbers. Minus 1.95, minus 3.8, minus 5.47, minus 7.02. If you miss 20, 30, 40, 50 or 60 best trading days in the last 20 years. That is massive. So in a span of 20 years, if you miss 20 good trading days, 20 best trading days, your returns are almost zero. So which means you cannot even miss one good opportunity a year. One good opportunity a year. Is that a joke? You cannot even miss that. So for all those traders in the market, this is a high alarming bell for you, for your portfolio. Are you still running after trading? But then what do you do? How do you define or how do you identify a strategy? Well, if you're young, invest more aggressively into riskier assets. And as you grow old, you become more conservative and start liquidating your riskier assets and buy good, secure, conservative funds. Why? Because the closer you are towards your retirement, the less time you will have to counter the downturns in the market. See, any of these investment strategies can be used, but it all depends on how you would like to use it. It just comes down to your preferred tactics. Don't drop your investment strategies just because you found something hot and trendy online. Stick to the basics. See what is working for you. The best investment strategies are not always the ones that gives the greatest returns. The best ones are the ones that works best for you. Personally, I go for long-term investing in fundamentally strong companies. Why? Because I do not want to miss out on that one particular trading day. One particular good returning day while doing a trading. So in a span of 20 years, if you miss 20 good trading days, 20 best trading days, your returns are almost zero. So which means you cannot even miss one good opportunity a year. One good opportunity a year. Is that a joke? You cannot even miss that. So for all those traders in the market, this is a high alarming bell for you, for your portfolio. Are you still running after trading? See? See you again. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video. Till then, SG signing off. Goodbye.